it, folks. Today's a little uh, repair video on this uh, floodlight, which goes for uh, goes to uh, tripod mounted tripods. <laughs> um, and you use these, of course, with cameras and phones and whatever else to uh, create much better lighting uh, for videos such as the one you're seeing now. Look at that. Nice. It's got a nice dimmer and it changes the super bright. Uh, it changes the color balance as well. The way it does that, by the way, is there are two sets of LEDs. There's actually a warm set of LEDs and a cool one, and it just uh, basically flips between the two. And this one's really cool, but uh, I have to charge it every time I want to use it. The battery drains really rapidly, and I don't think it's a parasitic drain issue, although it could be. Uh, I think the battery's just old and needs to be replaced. So a lot of times you get these, these devices like this that are worth maybe, I don't know, 20, anywhere between like 10 and 50 bucks, and people throw them out, and it's such a waste. It's it's a it's really bad for the environment. You have to go find a new one. Maybe it's not as good as the this one, and they don't make this one anymore. Maybe you want to upgrade this. You know, there's so many ways to improve things. So uh, today I just want to show how you can do that. And I have an upgrade in mind for this. I don't know if I'll do it today, but I'll do it by the end of this video that you're watching. Most likely, I'll combine all the parts later. And so the first thing what we're gonna do is obviously just disassemble it and see what's going on. And so what I do is I have these long bit sets that I really like. These are by Owl Tools, O-W-L. They sell these nice bit sets that are long. And this is a uh, works electric screwdriver, which I absolutely love. And it just kind of makes taking things apart a lot easier. Of course, there's lots of alternatives out there, but uh, this is the way to do it. And what I do is I just kind of feel, I kind of like put in the, the bit into the, you know, into the socket here, and I just kind of wiggle it, see how much play there is. Ideally, for a perfectly matching bit, you want no play. You want it to really, you know, you see that there's actually quite a bit of play in this one. That's the play, right? Um, it's okay, because these screws aren't using thread lock and they're not in there really, really strongly or anything. But ideally, you want zero play, and so you change the bit until you find the one that matches with zero play. And by play, again, that's just an you know, kind of industry term for the kind of wiggle, the kind of motion, uh, range of extra range of movement you get within the, the screw head. And it's just taking all these screws out here. But yeah, you can you can buy uh, lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries all over the place now. It's not like the old days where, you know, 20 years ago, these were really hard to come by. You can get them in different sizes. And uh, by the way, this is just my magnetic USB connector, which is, I put in all my devices, especially USB micro. Um, and uh, yeah, you can, you can replace things nowadays. You can fix things. It doesn't take very long. And uh, your wallet and the planet will thank you. So I'm going to take this out here. And by the way, I don't know much about this. I actually didn't buy this originally. This was a gift from a friend of mine. And if you're watching, hi, Tim. Thank you so much for uh, for this really cool thing. Um, it's the Releno. I don't know what the deal is. Um, I do have another one that I got, which is this much smaller one. And this wasn't cheap. Um, so I can only imagine this much larger one was more expensive. But similarly, this one, they drain the battery quite fast, but this, of course, drains the battery when it's in use, which, you know, I'm much more okay with. And it's it's nice, but this really big one is a lot nicer. And look at that! There's our battery. And it's not swollen or anything, which is good, but, yeah, it sure is draining that, uh, that 5,000 milliamps uh, quite quickly. Um, so what I'm going to do... I have a couple things I can do here. Now, if you're if you're watching this and you're new to repairs, I would just replace that battery, you know, just see what happens. Um, I actually save batteries from old electronics that I get, and so I actually have a bunch that I can try, and that's one way I could go about this. However, I might get a little more advanced and hook this up to uh, my amp meter and see if there's a parasitic drain on the battery. And what, what I mean by that is when it's in the off state, like it is now, is it's still trickle draining just a tiny, tiny bit of that battery all the time, more than it should be. Um, what's, what's often called, you know, kind of the sleep drain of the, of the device. 
And so I'm going to, the way you measure that is you put, you, you basically have to break the connection between the power in, which would be right here most likely. And then you put an amp meter in between those two. And the amp meter works as essentially it fuses those points, but across the fuse, it has what's called a sense resistor and it measures the current passing. And then it will tell you, you know, whether something's draining or not uh, an unusual amount. So that's one thing I can do. The other thing I can do is actually install my own shutoff circuit, um, which would basically give me the ability to uh, control the drain by making an additional on and off switch be kind of cool and then of course i can also uh change the battery one, one thing i might want to do before i change the battery since this actually looks like a healthy battery looks can be deceiving of course but um i kind of want to load test it i can actually what what i mean by that of course is i as i take the i shouldn't say of course but what i mean by that is i'll, I'll take the positive and negative disconnect them from this device hook them up to a load i.e something that takes power and hook that up to my bench supply, amp meter, et cetera, and, and see how much drain, uh, basically, how much the battery gets drained over time. And that'll give me an idea if, it's, uh, if it really is reaching its full capacity on a charge or if it's just old and it's not reaching full capacity and that's why it needs to be replaced. So that's sort of the, the low level to the high level of what I can do to get this working again. And, uh, and then aside from that, it's just cool to open things up and see how they work. See, I was not expecting that this diffuser would actually have LEDs coming from the perimeter, uh, perpendicular to the diffuser. That's really, really cool. What they've done is they've basically got two uh, diffusing sheets on the top and the bottom, and then there's ridges along the perimeter of this, you know, acrylic or polycarbonate plastic. And uh, that's that's a really neat design to eliminate hot spots, but give you a lot of brightness as this does. And just as I explained earlier, you can see, um, hopefully, hopefully pretty clearly if I zoom in there, that these LEDs are a different color. And so they alternate colors, and that's because some of them are white and some of them are that warmer temperature, which is kind of a yellowish orange. Um, and then, of course, we've got our two... Uh, which I'm guessing are potentiometers, although they, sometimes they use uh, fancy rotary encoders. And, uh, and then of course we've got a little charger board and it's, it's probably not too much going on here. Um, just, you know, basically PWMing pulse width modulation to change the brightness of these LEDs, the on and off time of them essentially. Um, not the brightness. Technically, it's the on and off time. So it is perceived by the human eye as brightness. Um, but the uh, it's actually luminance over time. Anyway, um, hopefully this video is interesting. I'll try to post some more uh, details as this project develops. And have fun hacking and repairing uh, useful stuff. Making, making things in your life useful again. And learning new things. Saving, saving money for your wallet. And... Uh, stuff from the landfill. All right, so I'm back here with this camera light diffuser, uh, floodlight type deal. And if my readings are correct, which I think they're reasonably correct, even with the wear and tear on this old fluke, I'm getting 5.5, 5.6 milliamps of standby current draw of parasitic drain when this thing is off. And this might explain why I keep needing to charge the battery. Uh, so if I do the math on that, which if I'm doing it correctly, you have a 5,000 milliamp battery, you divide it by 5.5, get 909 hours divided by 24 hours in a day. That means 37.87 days, this battery is going to go from fully charged to dead. And that is about what I'm seeing. That's a little bit over a month if the battery was brand new, which of course it's not. So about a month, I'm every month I'm having to charge this maybe even like two to three weeks. That sounds about right. And so I'm going to go with this being a parasitic drain issue and not actually a battery issue. Um, I can load test the battery and see what its lifespan is uh, on another device or another load. Not a bad idea, but I'm also going to just maybe just skip, skip ahead a bit and install a circuit here that doesn't have so much parasitic drain and see what happens. So we're back here with this light diffuser repair hack, whatever, and I'm getting closer to understanding the parasitic drain issue. In fact, I feel like I've got it figured out now. 
This is not broken at all. Actually, it is purely bad engineering. Seems to be the case. Um, kind of, kind of, kind of shocked. Kind of not. I mean, this is a fairly decent build product, but um, the mistake here is is pretty ridiculous. So. Just to, just to recap, the issue is the battery drains when it's completely turned off. The battery drains, I want to say in like a week, maybe a couple weeks. It's not, it doesn't take very long for it to go to zero. And that really sucks. And so uh, I, I put my amp meter on it and found that it was consuming upwards of 5.5 milliamps constantly, even in the off state. And that shouldn't be like there should be a very small microamp current for a, you know a trickle charge for something for a FET you know for an MCU or something like that and so I was like what's going on here so first thing I did of course I disconnected the battery this is the main battery positive terminal and kind of looked at some of the circuitry on the charger battery terminal to see if there's like a bad FET which is pretty common there's this chip right here which looks a lot like a MOSFET but is actually the uh, charge and discharge controller for this battery. It doesn't have one built in because of the high current that this takes. Uh, when a full load is applied, uh, this this thing can consume upwards of four or five amps uh, on the single cell 3.7 volt uh, nominal voltage battery, which is, is a lot. You know, it's about 15 to 17 watts of power that this thing will output when you when you turn up the brightness. And so it needs a much larger battery control FET for the charge and discharge to handle that much, uh, that much wattage. Uh, these two chips was a little bit confusing as well. It's like maybe one of these is a FET. Um, actually, these are the same chip, and they're both USB charger chips. So my guess is they connected these together in some sort of parallel configuration to increase the charging current, which would make sense because it's a larger battery. Etc. So that's probably a cost-saving measure. Like these two chips, you know, in parallel would be cheaper maybe than a higher current charging, you know, more intelligent charger system. So a little bit odd, but I can see why they did that. Uh, one thing that's very odd, which I would uh, totally dig deeper into, except it's not my main issue, but it is quite odd, is there is this resistor right here, R1, is a 100 ohm resistor. It's labeled 101. And in the schematic for this chip, that should be a 1000 ohm resistor. And that is basically to power the charge and discharge uh, detection. It's essentially like controlling the gate, uh, or, you know, something to, to kind of turn it on to control the gate. Anyway, it doesn't need to be anywhere near that low of a resistance, which means that there's possibly more current going into this than is necessary. So I was thinking, oh, maybe that's the problem and not this board up here. So I separated the two. I disconnected the battery plus connection right here. And so that way only this board would be would be powered. And so then I connected my amp meter probes to the positive input across the positive input to see if when this is disconnected from power, if this is my parasitic drain. And sure enough, I got a or not sure enough, I actually got a very reasonable microamps, very, very tiny drain, which I would expect actually if it's working. So this is this was not the problem. And so if you follow along with me folks here, I went to this board next and did my amp meter probes across this terminal. And sure enough, the problem is this board is the parasitic drain. What's happening? Well, they wanted to power the microcontroller to give this multi-state LED which when it's charging, um, although I, I guess I don't need to do that when it's off. So I'm not sure, just cost saving measures probably really. Uh, anyway, it looks, it looks to me what I think the problem is, and this is totally, totally, totally ridiculous. This is just bad engineering. Uh, is the positive terminal here uh, comes down, comes down, comes down, and it goes to this node here. There's a capacitor, bypass capacitor. Let's see if I can refocus this. And you'll see there's a SOT23 package chip. Sorry for the shaky, shaking there. So this, uh, this guy right here, which is labeled, I think it's A65Z5, if I'm reading that correctly. Anyway, this, this guy right here, and you can see that node, which goes here to that top pin of that SOT3, SOT23 package. This is a freaking voltage regulator. Urgh! This is an LDO. This is a three volt, 200 milliamp voltage regulator for the microcontroller. 
So this is taking whatever's coming off of the battery, dropping it down to three volts and feeding it to the MCU. That's fine and dandy, except when it's turned off. So when it's turned off, LDOs consume like a totally unreasonable amount of power. You're not supposed to leave an LDO connected directly to a battery output. They're not designed for sleep, sleep states at all. Uh, so I don't know. It's, such, it's just bad. It's really bad engineering. So yeah, of course, what's what's happening is when this is turned off, when I'm not using it, I'm just not needing it for a couple weeks, uh, this is burning off power. This, this little guy is just burning off power 24-7, which of course means I have to charge it every time I need to use it, which really negates like the usefulness of it. <laughs> And of course, it's going in the long term, it's going to totally kill this battery because the battery is doing charge and discharge cycles that it doesn't need to be doing. Really stupid. So um, what I'm going to be doing to fix this problem is I'm going to be cutting this trace right here. I'm going to totally disconnect this MCU. This MCU does not need to be powered when it's off, obviously. Um, and what I'm going to do is either repurpose this button or make a touch sensor button of my own to a separate circuit that I designed, which is basically going to be an on and off uh, MOSFET control circuit. I'm actually designing a PCB for this already, which is pretty convenient. And uh, when it's all put together, it's gonna be really nice. The only question is, do I wanna keep this button? I'm not thrilled also with the engineering of this plastic and this button. It's, it's really quite rigid and the presses are not super easy to do. I kind of wanna make this a touch sensor, so. We'll see how much work I want to put into it. Not that it's super hard or anything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do my custom circuit board. What's really cool about this project, aside from just being kind of a cool, uh, can get this done quickly and have a nice thing and show some cool stuff on YouTube, is uh, you've got a lot of extra space here. Um, and it's also cool learning about diffusers. I mean, I really do like this diffusion, this edge diffusion, diffusion design. Uh, but you got a lot of extra space here, in fact, all around. So it's really not hard to put in some extra circuitry. And it's also not hard to upgrade the battery later if I need to. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be doing this repair slash sort of upgrade. And then it's not really a repair either. It's just an engineering fix. Uh, and then I will uh, maybe look into doing some, some additional upgrades to this. Because uh, it is, you know, it is a nice light when it's working. So uh, yeah, more to come. All right, folks, Sonic fan back here with my... Uh, photography light diffuser sleep current repair circuit and just a quick rundown again of what I'm doing here is this light for a camera uh, for filming uh, needs to be recharged like every month or at least every maybe even sooner than that every like two to three weeks because there is a parasitic drain on this battery uh, which is the result of an engineering flaw I'll explain that really quick if you look here on this circuit um, you'll see, let's move this down a bit. Um, you'll see I've cut a trace. Let me go ahead and get my tweezers out so I can show what I'm talking about. So I've cut a trace right here to C6, which actually goes to uh, U4 right here. I believe that says four. Um, and so the battery positive terminal comes here, goes to that capacitor, that SOT 23, which goes to this microcontroller. What is that all for? What is that doing? This is a voltage regulator. That's a three volt linear voltage regulator, uh, which is stepping down the battery voltage, uh, you know, 4.2, uh, you know, usually 3.7 nominal. You can see right there, it says 3.7 for a lithium ion battery. And then going to the microcontroller. So that means even when this is off, it is always burning off excess voltage, excess power from the battery to power that microcontroller. Uh, in its sleep state and who knows how much you know how well that microcontroller has been programmed uh, to actually sleep either uh, you know to sleep appropriately so what I've done is cut that uh, trace there and then injected my own custom PCB which uses a capacitive touch sensing circuit with a p-channel MOSFET um, to let me control whether or not that circuit is connected and this is the touch sensor and you can see when I touch it, that uh, green light lights up and such. And what's cool is this is gonna fit right over here and I'll be able to touch it from the back of the case to activate it. But what I wanted to show, in addition to that, is the power this is consuming, like the difference. 
So let's see what happens. This is this is the milliamps that it's consuming. So about five and a half milliamps uh, right now because the battery. It's a little hard to see, but the uh, I've got two leads here going to my multimeter that are disconnecting the battery, and so the the multimeter the battery connection is running through the multimeter, which is then measuring the current draw. And so right now it's set to milliamps, so that's like 5.5 .5 milliamps, which is a lot. That's a lot for a, a device that's off. Um, you could power an LED with that. Let's see what happens when I use my circuit to disconnect it. Bam, look at that. What is that, 500% five, less, or five, you know, <laughs> less power being consumed? Uh, totally fixes it. And so all this does is power the, the microcontroller, and if I move my lead to uh, 10 amps, I actually should be able to power it through my multimeter. I just don't want to damage my fuse for the, the smaller load. When I move it to the amp rating, it's not going to show as much detail. Um, but let's go ahead and now power this up, and we'll see it powers up just fine. It's using a, almost a little under 2 amps. And I wonder what would happen if I would, oh yeah, it'll still power down if I use my circuit. That's kind of cool, because it'll power down the microcontroller. But can we still power it up? Well, yes, we can. So functionality all works perfect. The only difference is that I will have an extra touch sensor button to put it into deep sleep mode with this custom circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble everything back together and uh, this is gonna be pretty sweet. I'll actually have a light that I can use because I wasn't using this because I would have to charge it so frequently. It was always dead whenever I picked it up to use for a photo shoot. So this is gonna be pretty sweet. It's actually a nice uh, diffused uh, battery powered light source. All right, on to the next step of this. All right, and here we are back here with the parasitic drain fix all completed on the Roleno light source diffuser thing for cameras and such. And uh, yeah, let's see how it works. So I've got a little note on here and it tells me to press here and look for a green light. Now I'm gonna have to turn off the light sources that I'm using for this video, but you'll see there, there's a green light. The other thing that'll happen when I press there is if I press it again, this will blink uh, blue when it's off. Let's go ahead and is it off? Yeah, okay. So then I'll press it again and you'll see that blinks blue. And that also lets me know that the battery is now connected. And so when that's green and that blinks blue, now I can press the power button, or rather hold it, and there we go. Super, super bright working just like brand new. Only now, the battery is not going to prematurely kill itself by draining constantly when it doesn't need to. And uh, yeah, I also have a nice, uh, really quick off. I can just press there to turn the whole thing off instead of holding down this button. Another thing I did that's very, very minor is I added two very thin pieces of electrical tape underneath this button because it was way too hard to press and it was kind of annoying. So uh, yeah, let's see how this looks actually in action. Let's go ahead and turn it back on Look for the green light, and let's see how it works to illuminate uh, footage from this video right here. Go ahead and take it off camera, and look at that. Look how nice and bright that is. So that's all from this guy that I just fixed. Turned off all my other lights. See? No other lights. Well, I guess I got one on over here. No other lights. Turn off my microscope here, and there we go. That's just... Uh, yeah, so it's a useful thing. It's nice and bright. It actually uh, consumes almost eight amps of power when it's on. So that's why it has a nice chunky lithium polymer battery in there. And uh, yeah, now now it will have much more longevity. Hopefully, hopefully this video is interesting. I love to hear from folks, so feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If these kind of videos of designing and creating new hacks and upgrades is interesting. And uh, until next time, this is Sega Sonic Fan. Signing out.